five game suspension too high too low or just right for morgan riley i think just right i think it kind of fits what he did he obviously overreacted i think he would regret getting a stick up in uh his, his head area if it's around the shoulder at zero games but it is what it is i, I think it's close to the pierre terja and dale hunter thing you know 20 some years ago or he got 21 games so Five, five seems like a good amount for me, but you Leafs guys were probably up in arms. Oh, he should have got zero. You know, uh, George Peros is coming after us, like Sheldon Keefe. It's all a conspiracy theory. Just give me a break, you guys. Five games, good amount. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it is the right amount. And I think if you talk to Morgan Riley, he'd be the first one to admit like, hey, like I didn't, I just shouldn't have got him in the head, right? There should have been a different way to go about it. But for me, this, this is a touchy subject. I'm sure you got to be on my side here. What do you think he did taking that slap shot in that Ridley Greg? Is that okay? Or is that a message like, hey, we're just trying to embarrass another hockey team? I, I don't know how you stand, Carter, but I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. This is a rivalry game. Ottawa Senators, like, you're at home. You want to make a statement when. You're, you're on a little bit of a roll, and you're saying, this is our province. Come on, baby. We, we got to, you know, win these games, and it's good for the rivalry. It, I loved it. I, I think it was a fantastic play. I know people are up in arms. It's it's not, you know, it goes against the code. You got to respect your, your opponent's screw. No, you don't. You embarrass them. You're, you're up by a goal. You have an empty net. You have a chance to just dig the knife in and you do it. I thought it was a great play by him. So, John, I thought the interesting part was what the NHL sort of said when they handed out the five-game suspension. Sort of the synopsis was that, like, Ridley Grigg, didn't know this was coming. Like that's a joke, right? Like he had to know something was coming when he did that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You do something to elicit a reaction. He's not going in there and having like the hardest slap shot competition from the top of the crease for no reason. Like <laughs> he's he's doing that to get a reaction from the Leafs and he got exactly what he wanted. You can see him kind of glancing back. It's it's clear as day he knows what's coming. And uh, yeah, that, that was, that's strange for the league to say that because players do things to get a reaction out of the other team and from the fans and everybody involved. So it, it, every, everything plays into it here. So it, Greg got exactly what he wanted and he got Morgan Riley to take five games on him. So it, it's a perfect uh, end game for him. Yeah, I agree. I think just knowing the fact of like, if you're Ridley Greg, you got to know something's coming, which I agree with. And it does start the rivalry. It, it keeps us talking about it. Uh, you know, for me on this fact of, this Leafs team, you know, what you've seen from them and how, you know, the response and, you know, what does this mean moving forward? You know, does it show they have a little bit of heart or is it just based on this core four just flubbing us in the playoffs again? Well, I, th I don't think anyone's ever questioned Morgan Riley's heart. I think out of the whole, you know, top group of guys who have been there a long time, he's been the one mainstay. It's like, this guy cares. Like he, he really does care about the, the crest on the front, not the back, but I liked it. You know, at least it's something because if, if he doesn't do anything, we're talking about how much of a coward he is and, and how bad the Leafs are. They didn't respond when, you know, they got embarrassed and you know, this and that. So he had to do something. I think he took it a little bit too far. But at the end of the day, this this will be a net positive for Toronto. It shows that he's sticking up for his team. We won't be embarrassed, blah, 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 all that crap. But it, it's a good response from uh, Morgan. So we all agree it's an appropriate response. Um, how could he have handled that situation differently? Obviously, I mean, he didn't think to cross-check a guy in the head and obviously got paid for it with the five-game suspension. But how would you have handled that situation? What would have made it a proper way to handle it? Well, you, you probably try to get him head on, right? But he's skating yeah. away from you. It's, it's a weird thing. You're following him. I would have probably grabbed him and then just started throwing. And but it's, it's funny how that would have been less of a suspension if he just drops his mitts and like attacks him with his hands. That's maybe a couple games, but you get five because he hits him with his stick up in the neck area. It's just, it's so weird how hockey that's, that's okay, but you can't cross check him, but I can feed him his lunch for, for two or three punches before people jump in and that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, drop your gloves and chase him, I guess would have been the better answer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I guess it's one of those things where it's policed, right? I guess the big take from them is like it was a non-hockey play in the sense of it wasn't live in action, where I disagree with, like like you said, touched on really, Greg. He knows it's coming after he did that, warrants that response. And I feel like you played on the edge, right? Like this was part of your job was being an antagonizer and protecting mm -hmm. guys like that. You know, moving forward, anytime in when you're on a team like this and you're trying to create a response like Ridley did, you know, do you expect that? And you think that's going to help Ottawa moving forward as well? Yeah, this is a galvanizing thing for them. That, that was a big win. They, they beat Big Brother, and they're going to go ahead and hopefully, 
you know, make a push for the end of the year. They, they're nowhere near the playoffs. And they did this last year where they had this late season push and they were playing meaningful games, but they, they needed something to kind of jar their team and jar their system and shake it up a little bit. So this is good for them. And they're, they're a garbage team out of this year. I don't, I don't know what happened to them, but they, they'll be, uh, you know, this will be something they can hang their hat on at the end of the season. Yeah, we beat Toronto and they, you know, we really got under the feathers. This is a good thing. And they can, you know, take it for next year. Maybe. I don't know. No, I mean, as per usual, they're in line for the second half Stanley cup in Ottawa. This is what they do. They have a shit first half. Then they find their way. They miss the playoffs by five games. It's going to happen again, but I wanted to piggyback off that. Cause that's a great point for huts to bring up. I think in this market in Toronto, we're looking for that galvanizing moment and we're looking for the past and what's, what's happened Last year, the Florida Panthers, Keith Kachuk called his son's team soft. Now, like, I wonder if the Leafs can use this sort of as a rallying cry, a galvanizing moment for a turnaround, a massive turnaround. Do you think it they have it in them, or have we seen this song and dance before, oh, for, from this team before? Well, like a turn, turn around how? All of a sudden, they're going to be like a checking team, or they're going to, to change the way they play? I think we know who the Leafs are. I just think they have to put it all together in the playoffs. They, they obviously are in one of the toughest, toughest divisions in the Atlantic where you're playing Stanley cup contenders in the first round, unfortunately. So uh, I, I don't know, like they have a great team. They're just running into an era where there are better teams. And hopefully I always pick them. You guys, like, I, I think they have great, great players and they, they just can't seem to put it together in the playoffs. Like you mentioned, they run into a hot Florida Panthers team. They run into Tampa Bay, who's an absolute wagon. And it's just, who is it this year? Is, is it Boston? Is it Tampa? Is it Florida again? So I, I don't know. I just don't think they have it. But this this isn't the group. What are you going to do? Yeah, I think time has told, you know, the way the game is played now. You look at previous winners. You look at Florida making the final. Vegas, mm -hmm. you know, it's obviously be built on structure. And, you know, I guess for me, I'm just trying to find some hope in the sense of, like, the way they played last night with a depleted lineup, getting some guys to, you know, buy in and play the game right. Like, I feel like they have some good guys in the back end with McCabe and Benoit trying to play the white way, grind it out. You know, for me, when you look at this Atlantic division and the Eastern Conference, you know, where's a good matchup for them? You think they sit, you know, because you talk about Boston being a powerhouse, like the whole division florida tampa you know for me who do you think they match up well against coming in the playoffs i think boston i think that would be their best bet boston relies on their defense they rely on a structured play i, I think florida we saw they exposed toronto pretty pretty clear last year with their physical play they got under their skin and toronto wasn't ready for that i think boston would be a perfect round one for them and even tampa tampa's older but they play a similar type game as toronto they they try to outskill you, and Toronto can keep up with that. So if they can match up with one of those two teams, avoid Florida. I think Florida will be a nightmare matchup for them again. They just they seem to have it all clicking right now, and they have every ingredient to win in the playoffs. They proved it last year. So get one of those two teams. I think Boston is, is starting to show their cracks a little bit. Tampa's figuring it out, but one of those two would be a good matchup for them. Oddly enough, because two years ago, you would avoid them like the plague. But yeah, let's let's get Boston or Tampa, and I think we can make it to the second round. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I throw the Islanders into that conversation, too. The Leafs just don't play that team well. They don't stack up against them well. Mm -hmm. uh, so March 8th, John, is the trade deadline. And obviously, Chris Tanev's name has been linked to this Maple Leafs team. Is there anybody out there, players out there, that you think could make sense that could change the way your opinion of, of this Maple Leafs team? Because obviously they're an incomplete team, still have a pretty good record because they're so you know so incredibly talented, but they've been unable through 51 games to put it together on a consistent basis. Uh, they, they've really tried everybody the last few years. It's, it's not for a lack of trying. So, yeah. you know, Dubas did a good job. Trevealing is an absolute maniac when it comes to trade. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe maybe a goalie, a backup Carter. I I think a veteran would be good there. I kick the tires on a flurry, kick the tires on a couple other veterans, but it's tough. You know, you're you're playing the numbers game at this point. Obviously, Tanev would be incredible. He would be the best you know, option for them. But I, like, how much how much are you willing to spend on these guys, and how much can you make it work? But I don't know. They they just every they they get everybody at the deadline. It seems like, and it doesn't seem to work. So we'll see. Yeah, it's tough. I don't think anyone wants to give up too much for goaltending, right? Where for me, at least you have three guys in the hat. And that goalie, for me, looking back on it, if you don't have one of the top echelon guys, you're pretty much just playing the thing. Who can get hot at the right time? And I think for them, having Wool come back with Samson off, hopefully over all the stuff he dealt with this year, and then a veteran like Martin Jones, it's how much you want to give up. For me, it's the back end, right? Finding some more predictable hockey. I'm sure, John, you could touch on that, I think, as a goalie and, and good teams you've played on. When you guys have structure and you can create a consistent game, it makes life a lot easier on goalies. Yeah, when I 
when I build my team fantasy wise or just in my head, I want centermen and defensemen because that that's who the goalie relies on. That's who the team relies on night in and night out. And I think the Leafs have a pretty strong, you know, center core down the middle. I think they're doing okay there, but yeah, everybody wants more defensemen. I don't know why they didn't kick the tires on Zadora or something like that, but who knows? You got Giordano. He's, it's just boggles my mind that he's still playing for them and in, in the league, but I, yeah, get get go get Hannafin, get Tanev, get all those guys. Get get Uyghur, just take Calgary's defense. That'd be fine. And then then we'll win a Stanley Cup. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, you got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah.